Hi, this is Mark at LearnHowToGarden.com and in today's episode of The 10 Minute Gardener I'm going to be showing you how to plant up a pot that will flower from early spring right through to late spring and it makes really good use of that space of time when this pot in particular, which is one of the pots I grow my lilies in, would normally be sort of quite redundant. And to do that, we're going to actually plant three different types of bulbs in layers. It's a method that's been used for millennia. It's quite trendy now to call it a bulb lasagna. Uh, but really, it's just layering bulbs in a deep pot. If you're not already subscribed to us at Learn How to Garden, there is a link below this video. That'll take you to our website. And just for the cost of your email address, it means every time we put up one of these films, you will get an email telling you that one's gone up. And it also means you get access to our free monthly newsletter. One of the main reasons that I love pots so much is they're movable. I know it sounds daft to say it, but I can move them in and out. I only have to have them in situ when they really are at their very, very best. And for this particular pot, what we're going to do, we're going to plant it so it starts to flower sort of late February, goes through March, right the way into April. And if we're very, very lucky, we'll get into May. And by then, we'll have some of the early summer colour really joining in. And what you need, first of all, is a pot. Now, if you're going to get terracotta, please, please, please be very careful what you get. Buy English terracotta. And the reason for that is that all the terracotta pots, the English terracotta is fired twice. That means it goes into the oven twice, which means the actual amount of moisture in the clay in your pot is much, much less, so that when there's a frost, no matter, you know, down to sort of minus 15, minus 20 even, the pot won't split. If you buy a lot of the pots that come from Southern Europe, they're dried in the sun before they're fired. The relative moisture in the clay is much, much higher, which is why you get a frost and the pot cracks or it starts to delaminate. We've all got those pots that are sort of bits of falling off. So that's just a bit of a sort of, you know, hobby horse. Spend your money wisely and spend it once. In this case, this is called a long tom. It's quite a deep pot. That's because normally I would have lilies in here for the summer. And it means that it gives us a chance to get distinct layers in. And what you need to do is remember that with your layers, you're going to start with the last plant first, or the one that's going to grow the tallest and also come last. So that will be our tulips. And I picked all these bulbs up today. Uh, I deliberately wanted to get them uh, as cheaply as possible to show you that it's not an expensive thing you have to do. This is a variety I've grown before. It's a beautiful uh, tulip called Ballerina and it's very fragrant. The other thing I think we should all do if we're going to put things in pots, especially if you're going to have them close to your house or the path, is try to get fragrance. And that's going to come last. In the middle, we're going to have a Narcissus called Thalia, named after one of the Greek demigods. Uh, again, very, very highly scented. But to start us off, we're going to have a crocus. And this will really sort of brighten us up in those dark, dark days of February. But what you have to remember with this is you're going to plant it back to front. So the tulips are going to go in first because they're deeper. Then we're going to have a second layer, which is our Narcissi. And right at the top, we're going to have our crocus. And because of the depth of our pot, you've got room to get three distinct layers. Once you've got your bulbs, all you're going to need is some multi-purpose compost. In this case, I've got a rather large bucket of peat-free compost. And the first thing you want to do is get your hands in and rub it together. Make sure there are no big clumps. When you buy this, it'll come and have some quite big clumpy bits in it. Don't just throw that into your pot, you know. Make sure you just break it up. I've added a couple of handfuls of perlite to this just to lighten it up. We've got some gravel to go in on the end. And then surprisingly, the next thing we want is a tape measure. That's because all these bulbs have to go in at a slightly different level. The first thing to remember with any pot, if you're watching this and you've never done a pot before, there's a big hole in the bottom and you need to crock that. And all crocking means is getting some of your old terracotta pots. We've all got them. They've been knocked over by the kids, the cat. They've, you bought the cheap ones and they've broken in the, uh, you know, ice and snow. We've all got it. I've got a whole bucket of crocks. Crock the bottom, which means just placing these in the bottom to cover this hole. As you can see, it's not the cleanest pot in the world. It's just got the old compost out. and. Even though the old sort of 
gardeners, the Victorian head gardeners, would make their sort of under gardeners scrub these pots clean. I love this sort of moss growing on the top of it. It somehow has a beautiful ethereal feel, real natural feel to it. So the first thing we do is crock the pot. And although we want good drainage, never be tempted to just put a pile of grit in the bottom. That just creates a water sink. And all we start to do is load this with our compost. So the first thing we've done is put quite a lot of compost in here. We're actually about eight inches down and that's a good depth really for a tulip. And once you're eight inches down, the first layer is ready to go in. Take your bulbs and start to space them. You don't want them to touch each other, but they can be quite closely spaced together. And the interesting thing about putting bulbs in layers is that as these bulbs grow, if they hit a bulb above them, it won't stop them. Because if you think about it, where they grow naturally in woodlands and things, if they were to stop each time they hit a root or something, they'd never grow, would they? There are sort of trees everywhere. We've used 20 tulip bulbs, so it'll give us really quite a nice display. And as you can see, we've created this layer. And the reason you don't want your bulbs touching, if one of these bulbs happens to be diseased or have some virus, you don't want it passing it on to the bulb next door. Once you've got your first layer on, we're now going to put some more compost on top to cover this layer. And as I was saying, it won't matter if we plant bulbs on top, because as these grow, if they hit something, they literally just curve around and continue to grow. And although it says on the packets exactly at this depth, again, bulbs are really clever. If you naturalise bulbs in the ground, they will actually move up and down through the ground. If they're too low, they will bring themselves closer to the um, surface. If they're too close to the surface, they'll pull themselves down. They tend not to flower when they're doing that, which is why it's best to get them roughly at the right depth. But bulbs do move. In fact, it's a proven fact that oak trees move throughout their life. They will actually move across the ground. Much too slow for us to see, but you know, they're living on a different sort of time scale to us, aren't they? You cover with compost and gently firm down with your hand. That's just to make sure the compost between the bulbs. We then take our second bulb. In this case, these are our Narcissi thalia. Again, chosen for its scent and to brighten up sort of, you know, this pot is actually going to go down my path. And the other brilliant thing about long toms is it raises the plants up. So if you imagine you've got your pot this high and your plants are going to be about 14 inches above it. The scent is very close to where you're walking along and you really walk through the blanket of scent, which I think, you know, on some of those grey spring mornings, early spring mornings, really does brighten your life. So exactly the same thing. We're going to go around and there's 25 of these going in. Same principle. Don't worry about what's below it. They're not going to worry when they grow through it. And round we go. And when you're doing this, remember to sort of keep the packet somewhere that tells you what they are. I am terrible for uh, losing the actual names of plants. In fact, the reason that the lilies have come out of here is I have lost the plant label that tells me what they are. So they will go quietly into a back part of the garden till they flower and hopefully I can name them. If I can't name them, at least I'll know what colour they are, so at least I can decide where they can fit in the garden. I never throw anything away just because I'm too stupid to give plant label. They're far too precious, aren't they? And this is really quick, really easy. Nothing technical about this at all. So that's your second layer in. I'm now just going to cover that with more compost. Last but not least, we're going to pop our crocus in. Only two inches of depth now. Crocuses grow very shallow. They love to be baked. They love to get very hot. I mean, in their native environment, they really do get baked on the hillside. So two inches is more than enough depth. Compost pressed down, exactly the same again. The crocuses go in. Exactly the same, about an inch of soil, and then we'll just finish off with some grit right on the very top. Soil lightly pressed down, and just finish off with some grit. It helps the drainage just on the surface, it stops moss growing uh, or things while these grow through. 
it actually looks a lot nicer to set off the crocus. This is the sort of thing they'd be growing through normally. And um, we've got about 75 bulbs in this one pot. It's cost us less than 15 pounds for the bulbs and your compost is probably going to be another fiver. It's a great way to give yourself, you know, eight to ten weeks of colour and scent exactly where you want it at that time of the year when there's not a lot happening. And the beauty of this, if you live in an urban garden or you've got a small garden, this can now just sit quietly out of the way. It doesn't have to be a feature until it starts to do its work, until it becomes the centre. You know, when it becomes a star, when it's flowering, brilliant, get it there. But the important part for the bulbs point of view is after the flowering, when it's all green, that's when you're going to need to feed it. You don't feed it now at all. That's when you need to feed it. That's when you need to put energy back into those bulbs for next year. But it can look a bit scruffy and a bit untidy. So we can take it away, put it next to our greenhouse, put it next to the shed, put it just down the bottom of the garden. And that's where you feed it. So when it's looking beautiful and it's a star, it's in pride of place. When it's working hard, to put on the show for next year, it can sit quietly in the background. And that's all there is to it. Water it, leave it alone. Thanks a lot for watching. That's Mark at Learn How to Garden saying everybody can do bulbs in pots. It's dead easy, dead simple. And the scent will really cheer you up on a grim old day. Bye.